potent, but perhaps as a result of injuries, as much as anything else, both teams have lost some of their early promise. So today's game was a chance for one or t'other to get back that winning habit, with the help of one or two new faces. Your commentator is Barry Davis. A damp grey afternoon at the Valley presents some faces in different colours. The most famous among them, Tony Morley, the former England winger, on loan to Birmingham from West Bromwich Albion. They also have Ray Ranson signed this week from Manchester City and another player on loan, this time from Ipswich, 26 years old, John Linford. And in the Charlton Athletic side, they have at their right back, Martin Duffield on loan from Queen's Park Rangers. He wears number eight, but will play in his regular position, which is at right back in a side that still lacks the presence of Derek Hales and Carl Harris, both injured, and Dave Madden, who this afternoon starts a three-match suspension. That's the Birmingham lineup. They share with Everton a record of having won five games away from home, but recently they've found goals difficult to come by. <laughs> Referee is FIFA man Adam Robinson from Portsmouth in Hampshire and Birmingham City in all blue I think we ought to say defending the goal to our left that's Jim Hagen, number three currently in fourth place against Charlton Athletic who are in 16th and both goalkeepers have had an early feel of the ball on an afternoon which may not be easy for the grasping of the ball top surface will be very slippery of the pitch Kick against Armstrong. Bit of holding on Moore. Steve Britt's going to take it. So that the shoulder between Moore and Cool. And Moore, in fact, did the bumping. Here he is again. Square ball is on for Grit. Could have a crack. He had far more time and far more room than he seemed to appreciate. Here's Tony Morley. And this is a real opportunity for him. Oh, the puff of the cheeks, but I think that he will feel that certainly when wasn't troubled by injuries as he has been so much recently when he was in really good nick he would certainly have put that one away it was a clear run in on the goalkeeper wide of the goalkeeper's left hand but also wide of the far post Nicky John's player of the year here last season Moore and Armstrong well up by Lee, Moore! Fine save, brilliant save. What a nice move. Involving the youngster, Robert Lee, who got up very well. Instant shot from Ronnie Moore, and a fine save by David Seaman. Tony Towner has come to take the corner. For which Charlton have two players in the six-yard box, three further out. All of which is quite academic. putting it immediately behind but the best move of the match so far coming in the 15th minute very biding his time and I think rightly initial mistake by Darwin holding my Armstrong They're taken and some room for Fryer to pick somebody out. And he very nearly did. Somebody was Towner. Hazelwood still has the opportunity. Duffield. More. Fryer. Good curl on the cross. And unlucky. By Flanagan. Good play then by Charlton. 
They didn't just bang it in, they tried to find the right angle and in the end got a very good one from Fryer. And Flanagan coming in was wide of the far post to his obvious disappointment. No chart players strung out along the 18 yard line. Again, plenty of cover back. Asa Woods, yes! Came down very sharply indeed to the surprise of Seaman. I suspect that it may have got a nick off the defender who went with Asa Wood as well which produced the sharpness of the angle at the end. But Charlton have a deserved lead on the balance of play. 26 minutes gone. Branson. Garfield kept it in. Right, Ransom offside. A moment of respite, and maybe one or two of the regular Charlton supporters down the years will know that that puts them just one match short of equaling a league record. They've now scored in 31 consecutive home league matches, which is one short of equaling a record of season 58-59. Armstrong has just reached the 18-yard line and now moves forward from there. Clark in the six-yard box. John's having to adjust his position a bit. Out by Tana. Roberts. And the whistle goes for half-time. With Charlton still on course for a league scoring record on their own ground. Leading Birmingham City by one to nothing. And the goal scored by Mark Azerwood. And talking of records, during the halftime interval, a presentation to the injured Derek Hales by the former Sussex and England fast bowler John Snow. Hales having just broken the league goal scoring record here, previously held by Stuart Leary at 164. We have to go back to September to find Charlton Athletic's last success. That was at Plough Lane when they beat Wimbledon. One of seven games without a victory and also two Milk Cup ties against Notts County. And they lost both. It's Tony Towner. Both the sides this afternoon. Having what I suppose we still call an old-fashioned winger. Towner for Charlton and Morley for Birmingham. strong powerful header by Darman he needs to get the timing 100% right that time but the uh, header sadly for him inaccurate Massa players in the centre circle Hagen almost caught by his colleague Roberts So, fine play by Flanagan, Lee's header. Kill kick is the result. 
had to come out a little bit, Lee, to try and get a header, and it was very much more across than on, but some lovely play by Mike Flanagan. So tight to the touchline, then turning onto his right foot for the cross. Not quite as young as he used to be, 32 last Friday week, in fact. Long chase for Linford. And it's going wide. And Steve Darman, who put through his own goal at Sheffield United in the 1-1 draw last Saturday, was frighteningly close to repeating the act. But it wouldn't have counted as it happened because the referee spotted an infringement some considerable distance back. Had time to look this way and played it the other. Lee. With determination. That's quite strong. And the goalkeeper got back very well, in fact. Didn't take it cleanly, but he had to make a lot of ground, which he did extremely swiftly. Hazelwood, the man who beat him earlier, testing him again. Last week, he replaced the injured Mick Harford, whose presence, it should be said, has been missed today. Today, he replaces the top scorer, Wayne Clark, whose nine goals already equals his total of last season. But he hasn't looked like scoring this afternoon. Indeed, no Birmingham player has. start and settle down in the second half.
Ole. Bremner. Chris. Bremner. Now Morley. Must be. That is. Well, has the new man on loan lifted his side to save themselves even yet? Quick check of the watch then from Ron Saunders, and we make it seven minutes to go. Charlton Athletic 2, Birmingham City 1. Looks at his watch. Final seconds, the final whistle indeed goes. And the sequence ends for Lenny Lawrence and his team. After a run of seven games without a victory, they've got one against Birmingham City. The winning goal, a little fortuitous. But the supporters obviously delighted. The Charlton team enjoying the moment by going over to milk the applause of the crowd and indeed applaud the crowd who supported them. On the other side of the coin is that Birmingham's recent disappointing run goes on a little longer. Charlton Athletic 2, Birmingham City 1. Well, I must say the Birmingham supporters were rather special. They cheered their team at the end despite that defeat. Charlton supporters, understandably, were in a happy mood having seen uh, an end-to-end -end game and their team winning again at last. And the next few weeks are vital for them if they're going to remount a promotion challenge from their stretch playing resources. But after last season's traumas, I'm sure they're glad enough to be alive and kicking with a future. Um, as for Birmingham, whom most thought would bounce straight back into Division One, well, I think they'll need better fortune with injuries if they're going to make it at the first attempt.